Hi there everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about how to tune feed forward. In Betaflight 4.3, there are a few new settings which affect the way feed forward works. And so we're going to be covering those in some detail here so you know what they do, how to tune them, and what settings are going to be right for you and the type of flying that you like to do. Once we've covered the new things in Betaflight 4.3, we're going to go back and cover how to tune feed forward in detail including using Feed Forward Boost to help remove a little bit of lag that might be left over once you've found your ideal Feed Forward gains. So let's not waste any time, let's get straight into it. In this video, we're really going to dive deep into Feed Forward, and we're going to start by looking at the history of Feed Forward. Then we're going to see how RC smoothing and jitter reduction have been really improved and overhauled in 4.3 to allow us to make even better use of feed forward. I'm going to be showing you how to tune RC smoothing, tune jitter reduction, and what you should be doing with feed forward transition. And then finally, we're going to be looking at how you tune the values of feed forward gain in the pitch tuning tab, and also use feed forward boost to remove the last bit of lag between the gyro and your set point. This is how a traditional pitch controller would work you'd have the set point and the gyro, and the gyro would be subtracted from the set point to create the PID error. And that would go to your three terms, the integral term, the proportional term, and the derivative term. And that means that this derivative term here has an element of both the set point and the gyro. So in traditional PID controllers, the D term acts on PID error. And that means that if we see a sudden change in the set point, we get a spike in the D term. And if we see a sudden change in the gyro, we also get a spike in the D term in the other direction. So why use feed forward? Well, Betaflight separated the D term based on PID error, and it separated it into two terms, a D term that's based purely on the gyro, and a feed forward term, which is a derivative term again, but based on the set point. And this allows the individual contribution of the two terms to be separately tuned. And this is really beneficial because the two signals, the signal from your sticks, the set point, and the gyro have very different characteristics. The set point, because it's based on your physical movement of the sticks, actually changes relatively slowly. The gyro, because it's based on a measurement from the quad, can incorporate noise, vibration, prop wash, very fast effects, much faster than a typical stick movement. And so you want different filtering and different signal processing to get the most out of the gyro signal compared to what you would want to get the most out of the set point signal. It also turns out that we want a much higher feed forward gain to kick the quad into sharp moves than we want for a D-term gain. Normally, feed-forward and D-term are sort of working against each other because feed-forward is trying to push the quad into a fast move and the D-term is trying to resist change. So if you want the quad to really flick into a sharp move, you need to have a much higher feed-forward gain to overcome the D-term and push the quad into the move. So once we've separated the D term on the gyro from the feed forward term, we now get a graph that looks like this. So when we have a change in the set point, we get a spike in the feed forward term. And when we have a change in the gyro, we get a spike in the opposite direction in the D term. And we can tune these gains separately to get the best possible flight performance. The Betaflight 4.3 PIDF controller looks a little different from a traditional PID controller. Now we have this RC smoothing block, which smooths the set point before it goes into the PID controller. We then have a derivative term, which then passes through an additional set of filters, specifically designed and tuned for feed forward. So they're tuned specifically for the characteristics of the set point signal. That goes into our feed forward gains. That goes into our feed forward term and then into the motor mixer. The gyro signal also goes through a derivative function and into another set of filters specifically for the D term and specifically tuned for the characteristics of the gyro signal. So 
the determ filters are all about removing any noise that might be left over once we've applied RPM filtering, dynamic notch, and any gyro filtering that we have. That goes into the derivative term and then also passes into the motor mixer. In this video, we're going to be talking about the RC smoothing that conditions the set point signal and the specific feed forward filtering that's been added in Betaflight 4.3. RC smoothing uses a PT3, so it's a third order filter, to smooth the RC signal. So this is a low pass filter and it's mostly automatic with a single tuning parameter which is this auto factor here. The first thing that you're going to want to do is apply the most relevant preset for your radio link in the configurator. And that will take care of most of the setup for you including jitter reduction. If you then want to tune things further, just make sure that all your RC smoothing settings are set on auto, and then you can adjust this auto factor. So let's look at how to apply the relevant radio preset now. So we're going to go into the presets tab in Betaflight Configurator and select the RC link category. Now it's simply a matter of selecting the radio link that's closest to the one that you're going to be using. On this quad, I'm going to be using DJI S Bus Fast, but if you're using Express LRS or Ghost or FreeSky, you can pick the right one for you. So I'm going to select S Bus Fast, and there's a list of options here which you can review Race, HD Freestyle, or Cinematic. Now I'm going to be using this quad for HD Freestyle, so I'm going to select that and then just click Pick and then save and reboot. And see the configuration is applied and the preset is applied. And that's really all there is to it for setting up a lot of settings, jitter reduction and RC smoothing for your particular radio link. Once you've applied the preset, you can come into the receiver tab and you may see that RC smoothing has changed and now the cutoffs are set to manual and, and they have frequencies. Um, I would suggest that you can set them back to auto if you would like and then you can tune this auto factor. I would start around 30 is a good starting point. That will give you quite a snappy, responsive and twitchy feel. If you're doing freestyle cinematic flying, you could perhaps go up to 60 or if you're really wanting something very, very smooth, 90 or even 120 is is appropriate and you can push this auto factor all the way up to its maximum of, of 250 but you will really feel a big lag as you get to the higher values so start at 30 and work your way up in steps of about 30 and you'll probably get to somewhere where you feel like it's nice and smooth without being too laggy rc smoothing has a huge effect on stick feel and everybody should be tuning it and everybody should be using it. If a quad feels too twitchy, too responsive or too robotic, simply increase the RC smoothing and it will smooth everything out. It will dull everything down and make the quad feel much, much smoother. If you're a pilot who's more familiar with KISS flight firmware or particularly likes that feel, you may also want to increase RC smoothing to better replicate how KISS feels. And that's because KISS does feed forward quite differently to Betaflight. It doesn't do feed forward in the same way. And as a result, you typically have a lot less feed forward with KISS than you do with Betaflight. And the result of that is that the quad feels a lot softer, a lot smoother. And that feeling can be easily replicated with a little bit more RC smoothing. There is also a separate RC smoothing parameter for the throttle. So if you want to experiment with a softer, smoother throttle, you can increase RC smoothing auto factor throttle in the CLI. And you can see the term here. And again, we have the same allowed range from 0 to 250. Start with 30 and then increase it. And this is perhaps useful if you're looking to replicate the feel of bigger, heavier motors that accelerate more slowly or a bigger, heavier quad that has a softer, smoother throttle response. The really nice thing about using RC smoothing to give you the feel that you want rather than tuning the PID gains differently or changing the mechanics of the quad is that 
there are no adverse side effects for using RC smoothing. RC smoothing will not make your prop wash handling worse. RC smoothing will not make your quad heavier. It won't shorten your flight time. RC smoothing has basically none of the drawbacks of using bigger, heavier motors or detuning your PIDs to get a smooth feel. It's going to give you that smooth feel without any of those drawbacks. And so for me, it's always the first port of call where I'm looking to smooth out the response of a quad. Jitter reduction is a new feature in Betaflight 4.3, and it's at the moment only available through the CLI, I think. It reduces feed forward whenever your sticks are moving slowly, no matter your absolute stick position. So even if you're at full stick deflection, but the stick is moving relatively slowly, feed forward will be attenuated. It's looking at how much the RC command is varying from packet to packet, and then it's attenuating the feed forward gain exponentially if the difference is less than 0.1% times the feed forward jitter factor. So 0.1% of full stick travel. 7 is typically a great value for racing. 12 to 15 is useful for HD freestyle and cinematic flying. And you can go up to 20 to try and really attenuate feed forward, except when you have a very, very fast stick move. This graph shows how jitter reduction is working. So your RC command signal might have a sudden rapid change and then maybe some jitter because you know your gimbal has a little bit of noise, there's some noise on your uh, radio link, or maybe your hands are just shaking ever so slightly. On Betaflight 4.2, the input to feed forward would follow this trace exactly. So you'd see a jump up as the RC command jumped up, and then you'd see a lot of jitter as you had jitter in the RC command. In Betaflight 4.3, jitter reduction preserves this sharp step up that we got with the RC command, but pretty much wipes out this jitter here. And that means that your feed forward signal ends up being much smoother, and also it doesn't amplify, accentuate the small movements of the sticks, either due to noise in the gimbals or small shakes of your fingers. With jitter reduction, you can now set the feed forward transition to zero. And I would just recommend that you leave it on zero. That will make sure that feed forward is active over the whole range of the stick travel, which is really important for getting the quad started into sharp moves. You can then leave the jitter reduction to take care of any twitches, whether they happen at center stick or at full stick deflection. It's worth noting that Jitter reduction is set in the preset for your RC link. So if you've applied the preset for your RC link, then it will have applied a jitter reduction setting. You might want to change that, but typically I find that if you've picked the, the appropriate application when you're applying the preset, you don't need to adjust jitter reduction. And that brings us on to tuning feed forward. Now, if you've been following my 4.3 tuning guide, your sliders should look something like this. You should have damping at 1.0. Tracking should be set according to your PD balance, which you found from PID Toolbox. Your dynamic damping should be set to zero. And your master multiplier should be turned up to the level that gives you um, your maximum D gains that you're happy with. We're now going to be adjusting the stick response slider, which is what adjusts the gains for feed forward. Feed forward tuning flights need to have lots of snap rolls and snap flips and aggressive shaking of the stick left and right and forward and backwards to the full stick travel. That works really well. You need lots of sharp moves. So if you typically fly a very smooth style, that's not going to give you the information you need to tune feed forward. So get out there and really bang the sticks around, get lots of sharp moves so that you can follow that in the black box logs and see how well your quad is tracking the set point. So we're looking at a black box log now and we're using the UAV tech trace templates and we're on trace template number four. We have Expo turned off. So this button here scales the center stick to a much larger amount we want to turn that off so that we're looking at the 
stick traces as they actually are rather than scaled by some exponential factor. Initially, when you look, you'll probably have too little feed forward. And what you'll see is that the gyro trace, which is this purplish blue line, is lagging behind the green line, which is the set point. So you can see it's lagging behind at the start of the move and it's lagging behind at the end of the move. And again here, lagging behind at the start and lagging behind at the end. And that's a very good indicator that you need to increase your feed forward gain. So I would start to turn feed forward up and I would increase the slider by 0.1, maybe 0.2 at a time. And what you should start to see is that that lag is starting to reduce. Now you may go too far and you may get to the stage where you have no lag at the start of the move and that looks really, really nice. So we'd be very happy with that. But at the end of the move, you can see that we have lag and then we have this big overshoot where the gyro crosses over the set point right here and goes the other way. Now that we don't want that, that's really bad. So this is an example of where we have too much feed forward. So you can see at the end of the move, the feed forward is pushing so hard that it's causing the gyro to go past the set point and that's an overshoot. And we don't want that. So we're gonna to need to reduce our feed forward gains if we see something like this. And you will almost always see this at the end of a move, not at the start. And that's because of how your expo, how your rates affect the set point. Because your rates are higher at full stick travel than they are at the center, when you return the stick to center, you get a very, very rapid change in the set point that the quad really struggles to follow. And then everything slows down as you return the sticks to center. And so that encourages this overshoot. When you have the right amount of feed forward, you're going to probably still see a little bit of lag at the start of the move, but you can see it's much smaller than what we had at the start. And then you're also going to see a bit of lag at the end of the move, but critically, you're not gonna see any overshoot. So you can see that the blue line is coming down and then following the set point. It's not crossing over the set point at all. So this is the right amount of feed forward gain, but you can still see that we have a little bit of lag at the start and a little bit of lag at the end. Now, this is probably going to be almost imperceptible in flight, but if you do see this, there is one last setting which we can use to try and eliminate that as far as possible. And that setting is feed forward boost. So you can see we still have this tiny bit of delay at the start and a tiny bit of delay at the end we can improve the delay at the start of the move using feed forward boost. Feed forward boost adds an additional term to feed forward. Now usually feed forward is based on the derivative of the set point, so the velocity of the set point if you like. Feed forward boost is based on the acceleration of the set point, so it's how fast your sticks are accelerating rather than how fast they're moving. Increasing feed forward boost can help reduce that last little bit of lag at the start of a sharp move and it usually doesn't create any overshoot at the end. And the reason this works is because feed forward boost spikes really, really early at the start of a move. So it will help eliminate any lag at the very, very start of the move and allow the PID controller then to follow the set point spot on all the way through the move. Usually a value between 15 and 30 works well. Lower authority quads, which have more lag between the gyro and the set point, once feed forward has been correctly tuned, typically need more feed forward boost. If you need a lot more than 30, that indicates that you really do have a low authority quad and you probably need to worry a little bit about feed forward boost amplifying any jitter that's getting through the jitter reduction. If you have high values of feed forward boost, this can make things feel quite twitchy with your quad. And this should be adjusted with RC smoothing. So an example where you might have high feed forward boost is for something like a Cinelifter, where it's really big and heavy and it takes a lot to kick it into a sharp move. So you might have a lot of feed forward boost, but you don't want that platform to be twitchy. So you would apply quite a lot of RC smoothing to really soften that out and make sure that the, the quad is nice and smooth in the air, but still has enough kick to follow the set point really, really closely. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you now feel like you know everything you need to about the new feed forward settings in Betaflight 4.3 
and how to tune feed forward to get your quad tracking set point brilliantly even through really, really fast stick moves. If you like the work that I do and would like to support the channel and you feel like I've earned it, you can join my Patreon from just a few dollars a month. As a patron, you'll get access to a special area of my Discord server, as well as sneak peeks of the projects that I'm working on and an opportunity to feedback on new ideas and just generally get more involved in the work that I'm doing with FPV from day to day. If that sounds interesting to you, I'll put a link down in the video description to where you can find that. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.